Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here with the next video, and today we are talking about Defending Dragons, a much requested video, and this applies to Town Hall 10, Town Hall 11, Town Hall 12. These are all Town Hall levels where dragons have just been insanely powerful the last few weeks. So this video is going to cover how to defend them. Uh, generally, it can apply to any Town Hall level that I just uh, mentioned there. Um, so we're going to get right into it with an example. This is a Town Hall 10 base for simplicity, but like I said, these concepts apply beyond Town Hall 10. Um, so first of all, dragons are similar to miners in that the best defense is to mess up the pathing. And a lot of that is the air sweepers. They play a big role because the dragons are slow, and if you can keep pushing them back, it really deters dragons coming from that side. Either they're going to be ineffective or the attacker just won't try them from that side. But the best way to do it in my experience so far is to use some dead space around your core area. And it's kind of subtle here, but you, you'll notice that this is basically the core two air sweepers, um, two expos, and the clan castle. Then there's at least like three tiles between the next uh, building for this entire base. Um, and that's important because what's that, what that's doing is it's making it hard for pathing to go from one side of the base to the other because it's more likely that pathing is going to be circular instead of directly across a base when all the buildings are like equally spread out as they more or less are in most bases. So this is setting it up so it's difficult to, uh, to go from one side to the other in kind of a mass dragon attack. And by the way, um, we are sitting on a, a, a very close to a, an update that's probably going to nerf the bat spell from what we've heard. So yes, this strategy probably will be less powerful without the bat spell there to kind of open things up on the back side of the base. But it's definitely still going to be a strategy you're going to want to know how to defend because it still will be, I think, somewhat strong. And um, dragons definitely are going to be something that people will continue to use until bases at least some, somewhat defend against them. So this video is talking about um, how to shut down dragon attacks on your bases. So you'll notice that the, um, the core here is skinny, um, and that is ideal. And notice how the sweepers are pointed not the long way, but um, they're pointed out the short direction um, across of the, of the core here. And that's important because when an attacker looks at a base like this, um, you're typically coming in with dragons from one side of the base when it's roughly square. So either this side, this side, this side, or this side roughly. Um, what this is doing is by having it skinny, it's difficult to come in with dragons like this or like this because what ends up happening is all the dragons are either going to go through the core like this and get too close together or they're going to kind of cut out weird um, it's just not wide enough for the dragons to be efficient as they go through the base. So it's definitely going to give the, give the attackers a lot of hesitation coming at that angle because it's so narrow that there's not going to be as much value and it's going to be very unpredictable how many dragons go through this lane, how many go through that lane, how many go through that lane. Um, it'll deter a lot of attackers from doing that. Um, then we also, trying to hit the undo button and it zooms in, um, we also, looking at it from this angle, this is where we have the air sweepers. The attacker is going to want to come uh, either this way or this way, um, looking at the structure of the base. Because it's more spread out, they can come across, get the entire core, and then if the pathing is there, come to the back end. So that's why the sweepers are pointed out at those angles, because that's the way the attacker is going to want to come um, along the... Uh, uh, the, I guess that we can call it the long side if you're going at it perpendicular of the of the core. So that's why we have the sweepers pointed that way. Now there's other things in this base that are also uh, important to point out. Um, we have to think about the stone slammer, how it's used in dragon attacks and even more generally because um, we have to keep in mind other strategies as well when we're defending dragons. So a lot of the, the best defense for the stone slammer is pathing on the outside of your base, how your defenses are set up on the outside, and where you're putting your Seeking Air Mines. So you'll notice that we have Seeking Air Mine here, we have one over here, here, and I think there, 
and there's one more that I'm missing up here. These are the five locations of the Seeking Air Mines, and it's really just looking at the base, where are people, where's the attacker most likely to come with the, with the Stone Slammer, and it's not going to... Um, be into the uh, to the sweepers most likely. It's probably going to be at the corners of the base because what that's going to do is it's going to uh, set up pathing uh, for dragons. It's going to open things up for heroes, and um, that's the corners the most likely place. Especially over here, we have a bit of a Tesla trap because if you don't look at the Teslas on this side of the base, you might think, okay, the Stone Slammer might be able to actually path in toward this Inferno, which would get some great value. But these Teslas are to surprise and to mess up the pathing. So you always want it to be not direct pathing from the defenses too deep into your base. You don't want it to be that the Stone Slammer can make it too far in because there can be an Electro Dragon in there. There can be like bowlers that they can be raged and healed. There can be Valks. Uh, balloons. There's just too many things that you don't want dropping around the inside of your base. So if you look at the uh, exterior, um, a, a big part of this is just not having it too easy into your Inferno Towers. So over here, uh, we have a Seeking Air Mine, plus the Teslas make pathing very difficult. We also have air defenses spread out around the base to make it hard. And then over on this side, Seeking Air Mine defenses, um, air defense here. It's just really all around you want to make sure you have decent coverage. That's why I'm starting to like, instead of all your air defenses on one side of your base, keeping them more spread out like this, um, which is something we haven't seen in a while, but I think it's one of your best plays uh, at, at Town Hall 10, Town Hall 11, even Town Hall 12 right now, is to keep the air defenses relatively spread out. Um, finally, I want to talk about the uh, talk about the bat spell a little bit and some anti-bat spell things we have going on in this base because we still have to think about that until the update comes out and possibly even after. Um, the Infernos are on multi, but that's not the entire struggle because people can freeze them. So you'll notice we don't have the air defenses too close to the Infernos. We, what we don't want to have happen is they drop a Rage, a Freeze, and like six Bat Spells and just totally destroy this area. So the air defenses are set away a little bit, so there's not going to be... They're going to have to invest a lot if they want to get... Um, an entire like two air defenses plus an inferno taken out on either of these sides um, which makes it trickier and then we have the wizard towers and locations that kind of shut down the bat spell from expanding too far and what I mean by that is we have especially this wizard tower and then these two up here if there's bat spells in this area or in this area um, as they expand outward the, the wizard towers will start to shut them down once they get within range so what that's doing is it's putting a cap on how far the bats can go. You're not putting them, I guess there is one right next to the Inferno, but for the most part we're not putting them right next to the Inferno Towers because we want them, uh, we know the bat spells are going to pretty much have to be played right on top of those multi-Infernos, otherwise the multi-Infernos would just totally shut down the entire push. So knowing that, we're putting the Wizard Towers a little away from the uh, multi-Infernos, and that's kind of putting an, a limit to how far the bat spell can go. And we can even move them a little closer if you want. Now, if they get in range of these air defenses, it's less effective against Laloon, because Lava Hounds then start tanking the Wizard Towers. But it's all trade-offs. you got to think, you know, what, what you're trying to defend against. Finally, we have some air skellies I like to put by the Multi-Infernos, just to add to, you know, mess up the dragon pathing. Uh, we got one there and one there. So um, it can pull dragons. It can just help defend lots of different air compositions. So we have that going on as well. You can experiment with where you want to put those air scalies. But that's pretty much it, guys. Quick video. Hope it helped. Um, talking a little, about, a little bit about how to defend dragons. Uh, Town Hall 10, Town Hall 11, and Town Hall 12. I'll be sure to get some more like replay-based videos out for you as well to give some more examples, both uh, offensively and defensively, as we kind of transition into the new meta that's taking over each Town Hall level. But I'm looking forward to 2019, everything it's going to bring into Clash of Clans. We'll see the Bat Spell being nerfed for sure, it looks like, so um, we'll have to just kind of keep an eye out for that when it comes, and then we can talk about the Bat Spell post-update. All right, that all being said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bisectatron out.